Hello everyone, Danny here today to talk to you about Alaron Kong's first book in his Chaos Seed series, The Land Founding. This is the second book that I have had recommended to me by a subscriber. Thank you, Mike. Excellent recommendation. When, when Mike recommended the book, I already had it in my library, but I had it way down on my list. And so based on his recommendation, I went ahead and I moved it to the top of the list. Very glad that I did it. I understand what all of the excitement about this book is about. The, the, Alaron Kong is known as the father of lit RPG. And a mistake that a lot of people make is they think that lit RPG is only for people who play RPG. Lit, lit RPG literature role-playing games is my understanding of what it is. It's it's books that are based on role-playing games. And and even when, when Mike introduced the book to me, he introduced it by saying, hey, if you've played a lot of role-playing games, this is a book that you would enjoy. I have never played a role-playing game in my life. I play a boatload of games, but games. But mine are like Monopoly, Cribbage, Scrabble, board games, card games, dice games. Um, I do love Magic the Gathering, but that's not a role-playing game at all. I've never played a role-playing game. You don't have to, to enjoy this book, to enjoy the lit RPG. The, the, the RPG portion of it just adds a unique and fascinating twist to the book. It, it allows them to take fantasy and science fiction and, and twist it into a whole new direction where it hasn't gone before. So if, if you're feeling kind of like, ah, it's, the fantasy's all getting to be the same, science fiction's all getting to be the same, whether you role play or not, this will take it in a new direction for you. The, the book starts off, it's got a prologue to it where... You're introduced, but you're not really introduced to this land and how this land is operating and, and the fact that there's an entity within this land that, that wants to take over and wants to gain power. And he has decided the best way to do it is to bring humans from our world, Earth, into his world. Because the humans in his world do not have the seeds of chaos in them. The humans in our world have the seeds of chaos and he needs to shake his world up in order for him to step step in and take over. That was my understanding of the prologue there. Then you're introduced to this young man who, you know, he's on a team, they're doing a role-playing game on their computer, he manages to break into a castle, he gets isolated and cut off, and then he gets sucked into this world and all of a sudden he wakes up and, and instead of being alive in our world playing this game, he's actually alive in that world and his life has now become that game. There are terms in the book that are specific to role playing games. I didn't have a problem with any of the terms. Like I said, we play a lot of Magic the Gathering. I've got a nephew that, that he comes over a couple of times a month and, and we have Magic the Gathering tournaments and you use mana in Magic the Gathering. So and when they were mentioning mana levels and stuff like that, I understood what that was. It, it wasn't. But if you're unfamiliar with it, it it's like the first time that you've listened to a, a detective novel. So you're not a police detective. It's so they use a few terms in the book that you're unfamiliar with. As the book goes along, you're able to figure them out. And after you've listened to a couple of books, then you're able to speak the detective novel speak. It's the same thing with this. Don't just the first time you hear them use a the term leveling up or, you know, mana, and you go, well, I don't know what that is. I'm going to turn. No, keep listening. It will become self-explanatory and you will know what it means. The, it, the book's narrated by Nick Podell. I no more needs to be said. There is a reason that Nick Podell is one of the most popular narrators out there. His narration is spot on. Beautiful. Love Nick Podell as a narrator. This is not a book that I would listen to around small children. There is the occasional swear word. It's not a lot, but there is the occasional swear word. And the main character throws out the occasional vulgar joke. There, there's no 
sexual situations or anything like that, but there are, there are definitely the, the coarse, vulgar joke, like what you would get from a young guy in college. Those kind of jokes that you'd hear young guys in college make kind of a thing. So I wouldn't listen to it around children. As the book develops, he's He's, he's learning about the world. He's learning how to level up. He goes on a few quests. He dies and then gets respawned, which means that he's like um, born. Yeah, he dies and he comes back and he's, he's, he's reborn in a certain spot in the game. Anything beyond that spot, he's lost and he has to start over. But as he gets to new spawning grounds, he manages to keep... He makes friends, he makes comrades, he eventually journeys out into the world. And that's when you start to realize that there's, there's something really wrong with this world. And at first, the young man kind of comes across as that coarse, vulgar, college-style kid that you expect to be very self-centered. I mean, if he has a chance to grab treasure, he's going to grab treasure. If he has a chance to level up, he's going to level up. But as the book goes along, you realize that, that this kid really does have a strong moral core and, and a strong moral guidance within himself. And you can tell he's going to be the type of person who's not going to be able to just abide by all the things that, that are obviously wrong with this world. He, he does, as, as different situations occur, he does make choices that don't benefit him over others, but benefit others over him because it's the right thing to do. And you really grow to like the kid and to root for the kid. The one and only drawback, and I imagine in printed form, it's not that big of a drawback because you can skip over it. But in the audio format, it's a small drawback and you can just zone it out like that's what I did. So he's got an interface in his head while he's in this world. And so he can constantly check his levels. He can see what his mana, his health, what his skills are, all these different things. And he'll go on a quest and he'll finish the quest and you've leveled up and then it goes through every single thing that is leveled up and you've got to spend sometimes it felt like five minutes but i'm willing to bet it wasn't more than 30 seconds to a minute listening to his different levels that's it that's the only drawback to the book and it's well worth i just zoned during those parts and then came right back to the story when it was time for the story. So Mike, once again, thank you very much for this recommendation. Thoroughly enjoyed this book. If you like my channel, please subscribe, turn on notifications. If you like the video, hit the like button. Questions, comments, feedback, book recommendations, please enter them in the comment section. Send them my way. I will try to get back to you. But no matter what else you do today, make sure that today you listen to at least one really good book and I definitely recommend The Land Founding by Aleron Kong. I apologize if I mispronounced your name there.